So Montana is the third largest wheat producer in the United States. Now most of us probably think about artisan breads and breakfast cereals when we think about wheat. And we probably don't think about paper products or glues or even your cosmetics. However, I tend to think about banky beer and building homes. So what's left after a combine comes through and threshes the grain? It's the calm or the stock. It's what we all know as straw. Now, some farmers tend to flood their fields and decompose their straw. But I hate to say it that today, most farmers are burning their fields. Now, they say burning their fields is putting nitrogen back into the ground. But I ask the question, at what cost? It's putting carbon dioxide and methane and nitrous oxide into our atmosphere. All of these are contributing factors to our climate change we're seeing. Now, I see lots of uses for straw. We use it as bedding for livestock. We use it as erosion control and road construction. We all use it in our gardens as mulch, you know, and we buy the occasional straw hat. <laughs> but we also have enough straw in this country annually to build 10 million 2,000 square foot homes. So when people learn that I build homes from straw, they often ask me about the three little pigs in the first house. <laughs> you know, and I chuckle, but I find it fascinating that this fairy tale started getting popular in this country in the 1890s, which happens to coincide with some of the construction of the first bale homes. Now here's a two-horse powered baler. A worker will feed grass and straw into a hopper. The horses will drive a plunger that packs the straw and grass tight in a chamber. Once the chamber's full, another worker will hand tie the bale, remove it, and stack it to the side. Often I'm asked, how long will a bale house last? Well, I tend to refer to this home. This is the Burke home in Alliance, Nebraska. It was built in 1903. Today it marked its 110th anniversary, and it's still standing. This building went through a remodel in the 1950s. When construction workers cut into the bale wall and removed some of the bales, they found the bales to be as bright and fresh as if they had been harvested the previous day, even though the bales were 50 years old. This is the Marnot home in Arthur, Nebraska. Shortly after its completion, a tornado came through the town, destroying most of the neighboring homes and buildings. In the lower picture, you can see Joe and Winnie standing proudly in front of their straw bale house that came out of it unscathed. The first floor of this building was a restaurant. More importantly, the second floor was a dance hall of all things. This was really important for straw bale because it proved to people that a straw bale wall could support a live load. With benefits, you know, I could go on and talk about the endless environmental and health benefits, but I only have 20 seconds. So all I'm gonna say is I think it's pretty cool that you can build a super insulated, healthy, safe home from an agricultural waste byproduct. So loose straw burns, it burns great, but once it's baled tight and covered with cement stucco, it doesn't. In fact, the American Society of Testing and Materials gave a, a straw bale wall a two hour fire rating. Most of our homes have a 40 minute fire rating. And after all, what do you burn in your fireplace? It's not straw. <laughs> now for all, of us, for all of us geeks and nerds out here, here's what it takes to create rot. I see rot in all sorts of types of buildings. In fact, wood rots, why don't we question the risk of rot when we're buying or building a wood house? Just keep water away from the home. It's simple. So stud cavities are great nesting areas for these little guys, much better than a tight bale wall. In fact, if you think about it, wood siding and a drywall is much easier for these little guys to gnaw through than an inch of stucco on both sides of a bale wall. So today there are three main ways that we're building with straw. Some of us are still doing the traditional load bearing where the bale walls support the roof structure. 
The most popular way is post and beam where they use straws and infill. But there's this new exciting prefab structural panel that a friend's developing up in Canada. Now, I love the Bozeman Library, but check this out. This is a straw bale library that was built in 2010 in Colorado. It was awarded the best small library in America in 2011. A good friend of mine and colleague, Laura Bartels, managed the construction of this 25,000 square foot Waldorf School on the Roaring Fork River in Carbondale, Colorado. Volunteers from within the community built the bale walls. And to me, that uh, brings a whole new meaning to building community. Now, this is Canada's greenest home. And for all the engineers, architects, builders, and energy people out there, this home built blue 0.63 on its final blower door test, putting it at passive house standards. This home was built by volunteers as a Habitat for Humanity project. Once it was completed, it was certified as a LEED Platinum home in 2010. In the upper right-hand corner is a truth window. Many straw bale homes get those to prove to people that the homes are actually built out of straw. <laughs> now let's get back to those pigs. Now we know that the second home was built out of sticks, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say most of us live in a home made out of sticks, but we're not afraid of the big bad wolf. I think the moral of the story is just don't have a pig build your home. They're not good <laughs> builders. Thank you.